What's up, guys? It's Ani from Cold for the Chai. Today we are at the cafe with a very special guest. Please introduce yourself. Hey, uh, Solomon Choi here from 16 Handles, founder and CEO. Started my business here in East Village, not too far from here, back in 2008. We now have 32 locations um, throughout the Northeast and in Florida. I told you my story, right? Going to NYU and suddenly just being like inundated with the Froyo wave. And everyone's like, oh, we're going to 16 Handles. I'm like, what is 16 Handles? So to go from there to sitting with you today is pretty cool. I want to get right into it. I want to learn more about your background. I um, want to ask you about the type of impact that food has had in your life. And I know you come from a uh, food and beverage family, like a family business. So I want to get into that. Um, but tell me, so growing up, what's the one dish that defined your childhood? Yeah, so I, I was born in South Korea, immigrated with my parents in 1981. So I was just a baby. And our growing up, it was all Korean food. Mm. And my mom was a really good cook, is a really good cook. And so it was always Korean meals. And even when it wasn't, it became a Korean meal. So we ordered pizza, there's kimchi on top. And so like that was what I grew up with. I grew up eating spaghetti with chopsticks, thinking that that was normal. For me, growing up, one of my favorite things, and I think about this as somebody who would come home, um, you know, I was like a latchkey kid, right? Like a lot of immigrant parents. Um, and, you know, my parents would be working. I'd come home and my mom would prepare me. It would be, a, it would be white rice, fried egg, ketchup, um, sesame seeds in sesame oil mixed up and a little bit of soy sauce and so like that was my that was my comfort food what were like typical dinners like in terms of the, the spread yeah the spread so in Korean cuisine we have what we call panchan side dishes and a lot of them are vegetable based but there would never be a dinner and again whether it was like American Italian there would never be one without at least like six to ten different side dish panchans to me this idea of being able to eat Korean cuisine even with just the side dishes either on top of or in addition to what I was eating was normal to me and again it, even for some of my Korean friends growing up they were even kind of weirded out by the like what like why is your dad putting kimchi on top of pizza I'm like you guys don't eat it like that like I thought that was normal the other thing I think about it also is that like family time was always with the family so we rarely ate on our own. We eat dinner as a family and then having, again, that communal side dishes like in the center is something that's very normal to us. That's fascinating. Yeah, yeah I think family-wise, same thing. It was like, I don't care how busy everyone is. My dad used to be like, we're all eating dinner together. Use three words to describe the food that you ate growing up. If you had to like distill it, how would you describe the flavor or just the, the profiles? So I would say um, pickled, mm -hmm. right? A lot of pickled mm -hmm. dishes. Certainly like spice, but not like overly spicy, but spice, a lot of chili peppers being used. Again, kimchi being a staple. And then I would say sweet and savory. I know that's two words, but if you think about what's pretty popular now with like Korean barbecue, it's the sweet and savory. Korean fried chicken, sweet and savory. And so like, you know, I think that combination of a profile is something that, again, I was, I was very used to. And it's interesting to see that it's becoming a little bit more mainstream now. Super. Question. Growing up, did your parents have any like crazy food myth that they tried to convince you about like if you eat this this will be true because I know we got plenty of that but I'm curious which ones came across you yeah so first one I can think of and I don't know if it's necessarily a Korean thing but I was actually a very poor eater growing up and so like <laughs> you know I, I was always like the smallest in my class my parents were worried that I wasn't going to grow and so my mom would tell me like if you just drink milk if you just drink milk then you're going to grow and so like I would probably have, no joke, probably a gallon of milk a day, which probably isn't healthy. Wait, what? Yeah, my mom, she said that was the one thing that I stayed committed to and I liked it. So morning, afternoon, dinner, before I sleep, like that was a go-to. Now, whether that was true or not, I don't know. Um, summer of 10th grade, I grew three and a half inches. <laughs> so, you know, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Shout out to mom. That's dope. Let's fast forward a bit. So tell us if this is true. This is what I read. Your first job coming out of college was at a car rental place you were like a manager or a, a rental agent essentially that's right i mean shout outs to enterprise rent a car Man. the company that picks you up <laughs> now i studied marketing i wanted to get into that mm -hmm. um and the only company that would allow me to go on my vacation so a little spoiled i went to usc right the the nyu of the west coast and my graduation gift was i was gonna go to five different countries in asia oh. and not backpack but kind of like travel throughout those countries it was during the 2002 world cup japan mm -hmm. and korea what countries were those Japan, Korea, Philippines, uh, Thailand, Hong Kong. Ooh, yeah, dope. and so and I was going to do that for a month. Dope. So with that, again, being a tough uh, graduating year, the companies that I got hired for, um, they were like, you got to start right away. And you know how tough the job market is. And I'll, I'll share this now. I don't think I've ever shared this in an interview. My path could have gone so many different ways. I got a job from K-Swiss on their marketing team, so I could have gone the, the retail fashion route. 
I got a job with uh, E and J Wines, so I could have gone into the spirits, you know, CPG world, and then uh, a job with Acosta Sales and Marketing, which is performance marketing for a lot of CPG products. But those were jobs that I had landed, and the only company that said like, take as much time as you want. That's an awesome trip. Come back, you're hired, and I was like, thank you. That's the company I'm going to work for, and that was Enterprise. And that's what I wanted. I wanted that flexibility. I knew in my heart of hearts that I was going to own my own business one day. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, the reason I even went to marketing was the only classes I enjoyed in business school were the branding and advertising classes, really Same. understanding consumer behavior. Yep. So with that, I was like, it doesn't matter where I start. But in looking back, I think that really created a foundation and an understanding for two things. One was retail management, right? Whether mm. you're renting cars, selling sushi, selling soft serve, selling sneakers, you're selling something to somebody. Yep. And then the second thing when it came to really brand building was I realized that you can sell the same product, but it's all in how you package the experience. And I think with that, that's something that definitely res resonated with me and why even with 16 Handles, I was like, I want to create a unique experience. Mm. Right? And so um, it didn't matter where my soft serve came from necessarily, but it was like, if I can create that, then I have the foundation of, of introducing something new and building a brand and a community around that. And so, wow. Um, okay. Yeah. So shout out to Enterprise. Yeah, that, that's... That's crazy. I would not have expected that to be your start, but we'll talk about 16 handles in a, in a second. Before we do that, I want to talk about travel real quick. It doesn't have to be from that trip, even though that trip did sound really dope. What's like one thing you ate while traveling, wherever it is, that just blew your mind? Like, What's that one food that you can think of? So I've done quite a bit of traveling in my day. I would say one thing that really stands out was actually on a trip to India. And not just saying this because you're interviewing me, but it actually then also transcended into now it's sold in my stores. But I went on uh, this like missions trip. It was a Christian organization. They were helping plant uh, wells and things into orphanages throughout India. Yep. I landed in Hyderabad and we stayed at, I think it was like the Four Seasons or the Ritz. I mean, a super nice hotel. So they said, enjoy tonight's dinner and tomorrow's breakfast because after that, like we're going to be in, in, in the cuts. Yep. Right? Yep. And so it was like, okay. Breakfast buffet, I'll never forget it. We had that before we were leaving. And I'm, you know, I'm at the fruit bar and I'm just like, what is this thing that I just ate? Right. And I'm asking the, the worker, I'm like, hey, what is this? And he's like, mangoes. I was like, there's no way that this is mangoes. Right. And look, I've been to Thailand, which is also known for everything, but I was like, I have never tasted this taste before. Yep. And, you know, and later to find out these were Alfonso mangoes from India, which again, probably being Indian, it's like, yeah, we know those are good. That's like, but I'm just like, but I've never had this before. And so fast forward, when I'm working with my co-packer for 16 Handles products, I was like, we need to come up with a flavor that's that mango, like a sorbet, right? Wow. And he sourced it directly from there. And so that, and that's my favorite flavor at 16 Handles. When people ask me, what's your favorite flavor? I'm like, it's our so fresh mango sorbet with Alfonso mangoes. Wow. And when someone asks me, because they don't know what that is, I'm like, let me tell you what Alfonso <laughs> mangoes are. So there's always this wow. personal connection, but I'll never forget that because it literally blew my mind when I tried it. So I was just like, I feel like I'm eating candy. Like this is like, there's no way this is a fruit. So. That's a special fruit right yeah. there. So let's talk about 16 Handles. You're in New York City. It's about 2008. Mm -hmm. Very difficult time. Economy-wise, there's a lot going on. What gave you that confidence at that time to be like, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to be number one. And this is the vision. That's a very tough bet to make, especially in a city like New York. You were coming from Cali, right? So you're almost like a transplant, so to speak, at that time. How did you know? That this was going to be your thing that you were going to be the best at it i learned the business actually in southern california that's really where you know pinkberry started family friend of ours still today operates the very first froyo shop self-serve pay by weight froyo shop um that i know in existence wow. uh, it's okay. called america's cup yogurt shout out to mr song my parents connected me with him um they went to church together so like you got to check out this guy's thing you get to make it yourself okay. finally checked it out and it just blew my mind and i was like oh my goodness okay I got to learn this business. This is what I want to build my brand out of, um, this operating model. And so I, I asked, first I tried to pitch him. I'm like, you want to do this together? And he's like, I've been doing this since 1990. I don't really need you to do it. And secondly, like, I don't want a franchise. I don't want any of that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So he was a true mom and pop operator. And so I thought, nobody knows this business better than you. So I want to learn from you. You're like mm -hmm. a master with this. I worked for him for free for three months. I convinced him. I said, let me work for you for free. Just teach me everything like, that I can learn. And I'm going to create my own brand, but I promise you I will not open a store near you. Like, mm. he had no intention of growing anyway. So I was like, I'll, ju I'll just leave Orange County all, all, all in itself, <laughs> right? So with that, did that. And then um, at the time, my uh, father had sold his restaurants prior to me starting that. And then my aunt and uncle. So really, the family invested. And they said, if you're serious about doing this, here's, here's enough money to open up one store. Wow. Right? And then with that, I took that to, okay, where am I going to do this? 
Now I'm going to go do it in New York City. Everything has to change. Right? And so I was like, I got one shot at this anyway. Yep. You know, I was 27 years old, had some experience, but, you know, had all the confidence. And so I thought it was this. There's a reference to, to Back to the Future too, when Biff gets the sports almanac thing and goes back and, and bets on the I'm like, New York City right now, they're, they're, they're growing with Pink Bear. Like they don't know about the self-serve game. And that was already manifesting and, and changing the game on the other side. So I was like, I can be the one that brings it. And so you with just that, saw it. Like you just, yeah. You just and how it. I landed in East Village though, like that was a ton of walking around from down. I only knew two data points in New York. I've been to New York City twice in my adult life. Okay. Um, and so it was Wall Street and Times Square. Right. And so I literally walked. I didn't even know how to take a subway. Um, so I, I walked from there for like two weeks mm. and we're looking with different brokers. And I was like, you guys just want to make a commission. I got one shot at this. Right. And then it was not until we looked at uh, East Village. And that's when he did point out, he goes, you don't want to be here, kid. And I was like, why not? He goes, there's so much Froyo ice cream. There's way too much. And there were nine direct competitors within a three block radius there Jeez. from St. Mark's. Yeah. And so I was like, this is exactly where I need to be. And he's like, have you not heard anything I said? I heard everything you said, but I just went into every single one of those frozen dessert shops and I can beat those guys. Mm -hmm. So to me, the way I looked at it was almost like I'm this like young renegade street baller and I'm, I'm playing now in the big leagues, right? Yeah. This is New York City. Yeah. But I'm like, but one-on-one, -on -one, I can beat all those guys. And it wasn't just ego. I'm like, but literally I have a formula. I, I, I learned the system. I know how to build this brand through retail and through hospitality. I've opened up restaurants. So... This wasn't this first time, like, just get lucky. Now, not to, not to say there wasn't luck involved. Right. There was a lot of luck. But that's where I, I truly felt that I'm like, if anyone can do this, it can be me. Mm. And I'm going to go all in on it. And so that's what it was, you know. And I'd be opening and closing that store seven days a week yeah. Um, until, yeah, until we got ready and then started franchising. But that was always the goal was to come here, get it open. I thought I would have to work a year. I didn't realize right out of the gates, like, lines out the door. So it hit. To hear that from you, to be like, no, I knew I was good at this I had a plan and I wasn't about to hear any other variation of that like that's I think it's empowering to hear that's awesome um explain the name of your company 16 handles I also grew up on the west coast so for us we didn't have you know Carvel for us it was 31 flavors Baskin Robbins mm. and this is back in the day now they just recently went through a rebrand and so there's a lot of controversy around their their new logo but for me that logo was the old school 31 logo. It wasn't yeah, even about Baskin Robbins, it's about 31. I remember the one you talked about. So, you know, my mom would drive into strip centers, grocery stores, and whenever I see that 31, even like as a two and a half year old, I'd be like, I want that, mm -hmm. right? That was my happy place. A lot of choices, they let me sample. And the, to me, the understanding at a young age, the power of a number, if you can own a number and that um, instills in you this message of happiness, mm. that's super powerful, right? That scales. And so to me, I really wanted to own that number. In working at Mr. Song's shop, I realized, I was like, hey, Mr. Song, you have four machines behind that wall, but you got one on the outside next to the cup station. It's really ugly. Like, why is it out there? And I remember he told me, he goes, each machine has two flavors. I mean, technically there's a middle twist, but that's not another flavor. Each machine has two flavors. So I'm like, so you had eight flavors when you started, but he goes, yeah, but whenever you change out a flavor, even though you're putting in someone's favorite, you're taking away someone else's favorite. So I was like, so meaning I needed more machines, but my store's too small. So I said, if you could start over, would you have more handles? He goes, absolutely. So I was like, okay, I need something greater than 10. Even number. And then I thought of, yeah, like sweet 16. But then if it's sweet 16, it's sweet. It's not 16. And not only that, but, you know, Froyo at the time was like, uh, had like health contacts and whatever. So I was like, I don't know if I want to lead with sweet, but how would I put the 16 at the front? And I was like, you know, like, like that movie, 16 Candles, right? And so as I thought about 16 Candles, um, you know, I was like doing some rhyming stuff. And I was like, wait, and then if it's self-serve, 16 Handles. And so that, that's how that name came about. I still... Uh, and looking back now, I'm like, man, how did I think of that, right? Wow. Like, I was just like, that's kind of crazy that, you know. That's dope. And the yeah. craziest thing is, like, you honored someone who meant a lot to you in your journey, right, Mr. Song. How, how does, like, what's that relationship like now? Or what's, what's the latest that he's heard from you? Yeah, so I got to see Mr. Song uh, six years ago. So this is when I got married. Mm. And Mr. Song came out. And, uh, you know, and honestly, like, I was a little nervous yeah. because, you know, we were seeing some success and, knowing that he taught me what he knew. I didn't know how he was going to take it, but the he boss. showed up and it was like, he was so proud of me. Like I was like another son. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Mr. Song. That's Shout out awesome. to Mr. Song. Yeah. All right. Two questions left. And then we're going to move into the rapid fire round. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the biggest misconception about 16 Handles? The biggest misconception, I'll say similar to, again, whatever source you had was that I was just this kid from LA that came out here, saw Froyo and got lucky. Now the got lucky part I'll agree with, but you know, as, as I just explained to you, this was definitely a process, a journey, and it was planned. Yeah. Not that it wasn't, you know, I, I took some calculated risks, 
but uh, yeah, like it wasn't just I show up, showed up one day and decided I was going to do this. Uh, so I would say that's that's probably this the first was, one. This was a whole vision yeah. and a whole plan. Yeah. Um, last question: What do you guys do at Sixteen Handles better than everybody else? I think what we do better than everyone else is really focus on the element of customization of soft serve. But at the end of the day, the value proposition of Sixteen Handles is. It's discovery. This idea of how do we try things in a non-confrontational, low hurdle barrier, it doesn't get easier than 16 hours. So for us, it's that place of discovery, but also like you can go and get your favorites. Yeah, that's yeah. super thoughtful. And like, I don't think most people will, will get that unless it's kind of like explained. So that's really dope. Man, thank you so much. Solomon Choi, 16 Handles. Appreciate you, man. My pleasure.